a Wikivide Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Get Out Get Out is a 2017 American horror film written and directed by Jordan Peele in his directorial debut. It stars Daniel Kaluuya as Chris, a black man who uncovers a disturbing secret when he meets the family of his white girlfriend. Bradley Whitford, Caleb Landry Jones, Stephen Root, Lakeith Stanfield, and Catherine Keener co-star. Get Out premiered at the Sundance Film Festival on January 24, 2017, and was theatrically released in the United States on February 24, 2017, by Universal Pictures. Critics praised its screenplay, direction, Kaluuya, and Williams' performances, and its satirical themes. It was chosen by the National Board of Review, the American Film Institute, and Time magazine as one of the top 10 films of the year. The film was also a box office success, grossing $255 million worldwide on a $4.5 million budget. It turned a net profit of $124 million, becoming the 10th most profitable film of 2017, and one of the most profitable horror films in recent years. Get Out received numerous accolades. At the 90th Academy Awards, it won the Academy Award for Best Original Screenplay, and was nominated for Best Picture, Best Director and Best Actor for Kaluuya. It also earned five nominations at the 23rd Critics' Choice Awards, two at the 75th Golden Globe Awards and two at the 71st British Academy Film Awards. Plot African-American photographer Chris Washington reluctantly agrees to meet the family of his white girlfriend, Rose Armitage, during their drive. To the family's countryside estate, they hit a deer and report the incident. The white policeman asks for Chris's identification even though he was not driving, but Rose intervenes and the incident goes unrecorded. At the house, Rose's parents, neurosurgeon Dean and hypnotherapist Missy, and her brother Jeremy make discomforting comments about black people. Chris witnesses strange behavior from the estate's black workers, housekeeper Georgina and groundskeeper Walter. Unable to sleep, Chris goes outside to smoke, and sees Walter sprinting through the grounds while Georgina prowls the house. Missy talks Chris into a hypnotherapy session, ostensibly, to cure his smoking addiction. In a trance, he recounts the death of his mother in a hit and run when he was a child, about which he feels guilty, and sinks into a void Missy calls the sunken place. He awakens believing he had a nightmare but realizes cigarettes now revolt him. Walter confirms that Chris was in Missy's office. Georgina unplugs his phone, draining his battery, though she claims it was an accident. Dozens of wealthy white people arrive for the Armitage's annual get-together. They take an interest in Chris, admiring his physique, or expressing admiration for black figures such as Tiger Woods. Jim Hudson, a blind art dealer, takes particular interest in Chris's photography skills. Chris meets another black man, Logan King, who acts strangely and is married to a much older white woman. Chris calls his friend, a black TSA agent named Rod Williams, about the hypnosis and the strange behavior at the house. Chris tries to inconspicuously photograph Logan with his phone to send to Rod, but his flash goes off. Logan becomes hysterical, yelling at Chris to get out. The others restrain him and Dean claims Logan had an epileptic seizure. Away from the house, Chris persuades Rose that they should leave, while Dean holds an auction with a photo of Chris, which Jim Hudson wins. Chris sends the photo of Logan to Rod. Rod recognizes Logan as Andre Hayworth, who has been missing for months. Suspecting a conspiracy, Rod goes to the police, but they deride him. While he packs to leave, Chris finds photos of Rose in prior relationships with black men, contradicting her claim that Chris is her first black boyfriend. The collection also includes pictures of Rose with Walter and Georgina. Chris is blocked from leaving the estate by the Armitage family, including Rose. He tries to attack Jeremy, but Missy hypnotizes him into unconsciousness. He awakens strapped to a chair in the basement. A video presentation featuring Rose's grandfather Roman explains that the family transplants the brains of white people into black bodies. The consciousness of the host remains in the sunken place, watching what is happening but powerless to change anything. Hudson tells Chris he wants his body so he can gain Chris's sight and artistic talents. Chris plugs his ears with cotton stuffing pulled from the chair, blocking the hypnosis. When Jeremy comes to collect him for the surgery, Chris bludgeons him with a croquet ball. 
and impales Dean on the antlers of a deer mount. After fatally stabbing Missy and beating Jeremy to death, he drives away in Jeremy's car, but hits Georgina. Remembering his own mother's death, he carries Georgina into the car, but she is possessed by Rose's grandmother Marianne. She attacks him and he crashes, killing her. An armed Rose apprehends him with Walter, who is possessed by Roman. Chris awakens Walter, with his phone flash. Walter takes Rose's rifle and shoots her and then himself. Wounded, Rose attempts to shoot Chris. Chris begins to strangle her, but stops. Rod arrives in a TSA car and rescues Chris, leaving Rose to bleed to death in the road as Chris and Rod leave. Production Get Out is the directorial debut of Jordan Peele, who had previously worked in comedy, including the sketch show Key and Peele. He felt the horror and comedy genres are similar in that, so much of it is pacing, so much of it hinges on, reveals, and that comedy gave him something of a training for the film. The Stepford Wives provided inspiration, about which Peel said, it's a horror movie, but has a satirical premise. As the film deals with racism, Peel has stated that the story is very personal, although he noted that it quickly veers off from anything autobiographical. Peel was introduced to producer Sean McKittrick by comedy partner Keegan Michael Key in 2013. I was shooting a movie with Keegan Michael Key. He said, You gotta meet Jordan. He's a horror fanatic and he has all these ideas. Jordan and I met for coffee in New Orleans. He said, Here's one you'll never want to make. And he pitched me the whole story. I'd never seen that movie before. It fascinated me. So I said right at the table, OK, I'm going to buy this pitch and pay you to write it. I think he was a little shocked. Peel wrote the first draft of the script in two months. The lead actors, Daniel Kaluuya and Alison Williams, were cast in November 2015, with other roles cast between December 2015 and February 2016. That party sequence is why I really wanted to do this film, because I've been to that party, Kaluuya told the Los Angeles Times. Jordan told me that he had always pictured me as Rose, because Peter Panormani would make it easier for people to trust me, Williams noted. I was looking for a role that would weaponize everything that people take for granted about me. So I instantly signed on to it. Principal photography began on February 16, 2016. Shooting took place in Fairhope, Alabama, for three weeks, followed by Barton Academy, and in the Ashland Place Historic District in Midtown Mobile, Alabama. Principal photography ended in 23 days. The scene, where Rose drinks milk while looking at potential future victims was conceived shortly before shooting. The music used in the scene, The Time of My Life, was intended to reflect Rose's childishness. Peel was worried about the film's chances of success. Telling the Los Angeles Times, what if white people don't want to come see the movie, because they're afraid of being villainized, with black people in the crowd? What if black people don't want to see the movie, because they don't want to sit next? to a white person while a black person is being victimized on screen? Alternative Endings In the original ending, Chris is arrested by the police while trying to strangle Rose. Instead of rescuing Chris, Rod meets him in jail and asks him for information about the Armitage family to investigate, but Chris insists that he stopped them and everything is fine. Peel intended this ending to reflect the realities of racism. By the time production had begun, however, Several high-profile police shootings of black people had made discussion, in Peel's words, more woke. After gauging reception at test screenings, he decided the film needed a happy ending, and that having a moment where the audience believes Chris is about to be arrested would preserve the intended reaction. Peel considered several other endings, some of which are included on the DVD and Blu-ray release. In one ending, Rod breaks into the estate, finds Chris, and calls his name, but Chris responds, I assure you. I don't know who you're talking about. Soundtrack Michael Abels composed the film's score, which Peel wanted to have, distinctly black voices and black musical references. This proved to be a challenge, as Peel found that African-American music typically has what he termed, at the very least, a glimmer of hope to it. At the same time, Peel also wanted to avoid having a voodoo motif. The final score features Swahili voices as well as a blues influence. Siki Liza Kwa Henga is a Swahili phrase that translates to, listen to ancestors, which indicates to the listener, something bad is coming. 
Run, the words are issuing a warning to Chris, Peel said. The whole idea of the movie is get out. It's what we're screaming at the character on screen. The song, Redbone, by Childish Gambino appears at the movie's beginning. Other songs in the film include, Run Rabbit Run, by Flanagan and Allen and, The Time of My Life, by Bill Medley and Jennifer Warnes. Themes The Guardian wrote, The thing Get Out does so well and the thing that will rankle with some viewers is to show how, however unintentionally, these same people can make life so hard and uncomfortable for black people. It exposes a liberal ignorance and hubris that has been allowed to fester. It's an attitude, an arrogance which in the film leads to a horrific final solution, but in reality, leads to a complacency that is just as dangerous. Peel said about the film, the real thing at hand here is slavery. It's some dark shit. The film also depicts the lack of attention on missing black Americans compared to missing white females. Slate's Damon Young stated the film's premise was depressingly plausible. Although black people only comprise 13% of America's population, they are 34% of America's missing, a reality that exists as the result of many racial and socioeconomic factors rendering black lives demonstratively less valuable than the lives of our white counterparts. Peel wrote Rose as a subversion of the white savior trope, and in particular films where most white characters are evil, but one is good. Peel and Williams stated that Rose behaved like a teenager as her emotional development was delayed. Williams believed that Rose was not a victim of indoctrination, hypnotism or Stockholm syndrome, but simply evil. After Rose's intentions are revealed, her previous, soft and welcoming, appearance becomes a vision of cold, meticulous elitism, with hunting jodhpurs, a white dress shirt, and a sleek ponytail. She hangs photographs of her ex-partners on her wall like hunting trophies. Box Office Get Out grossed $176 million in the United States and Canada and $79 million in other territories for a worldwide gross of $255 million, against a production budget of $4.5 million. Deadline Hollywood calculated the net profit of the film to be $124.8 million, when factoring together all expenses and revenues, making it the 10th most profitable release of 2017. In North America, Get Out was released on February 24, 2017, alongside Collide and Rock Dog, and was expected to gross $20.25 million from 2,773 theaters in its opening weekend. The film made $1.8 million from Thursday night previews and $10.8 million on its first day. It went on to open for $33.4 million, finishing first at the box office. 38% of the film's opening weekend audience was African American, while 35% was white, with Georgia being its most profitable market. In its second weekend, the film finished in second, at the box office behind new release Logan, grossing $28.3 million, for a drop of 15.4%. Horror films tend to drop at least 60% in their second weekend, so this was above average. In its third weekend, the film grossed $21.1 million, dropping just 25% from its previous week, and finished third at the box office behind Newcomer Kong, Skull Island and Logan. In March 2017, three weeks after its release, Get Out crossed the $100 million mark domestically, making Peel the first black writer-director to do so, with his debut movie. On April 8, 2017, the film became the highest-grossing film domestically directed by a black filmmaker, beating out F. Gary Gray's Straight Outta Compton, which grossed $162.8 million domestically in 2015. Gray reclaimed the record two weeks later, when The Fate of the Furious grossed $173.3 million on its 14th day of release on April 27. Domestically, Get Out is also the highest-grossing debut film based on an original screenplay in Hollywood history, beating the two-decade-long record of 1999's The Blair Witch Project. By the end of March, Los Angeles Times had declared the film's success a cultural phenomenon, noting that in addition to its box office success, moviegoers have shared countless sunken place internet memes and other Get Out-inspired fan art across social media. Josh Rottenberg, the editor of the piece, attributed the film's success to the fact that it was released at one of the most politically charged moments in memory. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries. 
Would you like to know more?